What's up, nerds? It's me, Hey Archer. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here on this YouTube channel, like, comment, and subscribe. But if you are one of my early access, audio-only podcast listeners, leave a review. And of course, share this with your friends. Here on the Hey Archer channel, we talk all things nerdy, from dating, to movies, to fights, comics, all the above. I really don't do too many comics these days, actually. I actually stopped reading comics a while back. It takes up too much time. Too expensive. Too costly. But this is episode 179. For you new listeners, I count backwards on this show, counting down to zero, where I will be on the Joe Rogan podcast. That's my plan. That's my goal. But if you remember from last week's episode, I do not make plans and goals that are set in stone to the extent that they become an obsession. It becomes nice to hit these things. But if you're obsessed over something, you're merely setting yourself up for failure. So if it happens, it happens. I have 178 more episodes after this to go. And we'll see where this goes. But I hope you guys had a good New Year's. Hope you guys were safe. Hope you guys uh, were careful out there. I did something different this year, actually, in theory. So I actually still went to hang out with some friends. Great time. Fun for all. I had zero alcohol this year. Zero for New Year's Eve. Now, part of that, of course, was I had work the next day. But that wouldn't be the first time. Um, a couple of months ago, I actually tried something different. And I said I would try to be slightly different going forward in a respect my body type of way. So what that means, and this is not a New Year's resolution type t- uh, kind of thing. This is me just being kind of experimenting with my body, if you would. There was a couple of things I said I would ease off on slash cut out completely. Now, historically, of course, Uh, Many of you may have tried different fad diets and all of that. You may know that when you try to cut things out, you will, you're bound to fail. It's going to happen. But I figured I'd give it a shot anyway. Why not? I decided beer, cheese in my house. What was the other one? Oh, drinking in general and Taco Bell which was a major one, would make it off my routine, I love these things all the time list. Now, initially, there was some weight fluctuation there because with any change, of course, you'll have that. Um, But beer, I've not had beer since September, actually. Just been like full on, almost cold turkey on beer. Um, I'll skip the drinking since, where was I? That'd be there. I think I was there. Hopefully this is not offending you. For those who can't see it, I've my middle finger and my thumb out. Uh, so drinking, it is pretty much only when I go to comedy. And that's merely because when I go to comedy, the bartender knows us and has drinks ready when we walk through the door. By the way, if you live in the Boston area, you should go check out um, Pick a Side Stupid Mondays and Fridays at Maggie's Lounge. The other thing I cut out, I don't remember the order here, I lost track, was um, Taco Bell. Huge obsession. I freaking love Taco Bell. To the extent that I love getting Taco Bell gift cards. If you know me personally, you knew that was the way to my heart. Got rid of that. Lastly, cheese in the house. Weird one, I know. reason I knocked that one out was, I feel like cheese, alcohol in general, just wasted calories. Now... Back in, I don't know, five, no, well, 10 years ago, I want to say. Yeah, yeah, 10 years ago. Uh, Actually, let's jump further back in time. Since it's New Year, New Me, why not? I'll give you guys some weight loss stories. So a couple episodes back, I referenced in college how I was trying to, um, that was my, my first intro into talking to women on a daily basis. Because I actually went to an all-boys school growing up. And once I was in middle school, they started already separating the guys and girls. So, that long story short, I realized, oh, you actually have to, like, dress up, cut your hair, uh, maybe look decent if you're trying to actually talk to, to women. And no, telling them plot lines from your favorite comic book is not going to help on its own. I know, kind of weird. 
anyhow, I ended up um, getting kind of motivated to lose weight in that sense. Then a little show known as The Ultimate Fighter came out. And in watching it, it kind of got me hyped. It got me hyped for martial arts again. It got me hyped for just being in shape and watching everybody do like all like sorts of physical challenges and whatnot. Got me super excited. So, maybe here, those of you listening, I'm pointing to the side. I will post a picture from college. And that was a, I want to say, 80-pound drop that I was able to do in around a year. Pure cardio. Just absolutely pure cardio. And sure enough, sure enough, I will say, um, with the weight coming down, more attention was given. There's no doubt that happens in any scenario. But with that, it was also, you feel good, you look good. I won't say the other part because somebody already says that. If you're listening, thanks. Um, but, you know, you feel good, you look good, confidence is up. You're willing to talk to people that you probably wouldn't have talked to before. That kind of jam. Then a sweet, sweet nectar entered my life known as beer. And man... Did beer reverse everything that I had done? <laughs> Hard. Many of you probably did the same in college. It's funny, in my school actually, because I went to a uh, maritime college, in my school, we didn't have the freshman 15 because you actually had to do uh, PT on a regular basis and go to um, fitness classes as part of your curriculum. You actually had their sophomore 15, and that was when you no longer had to do all that PT you had uh, leave time. You can go out. You know, contraband was brought in and out of school. So that's when the, the sophomore 15, that jumps up on there. Fast forward uh, to about 10 years ago. Everything I did uh, initially in college reversed. Back up in weight. All of a sudden, my one of my good friends is like, you know, I feel like us going out and getting wrecked every Friday, Saturday, Sunday it's not the best uses of our time because now we're in the job market or sorry, we're in the job world and you work five days a week to spend your days off recovering from just boozing the entire time. So we all kind of together made this lifestyle change and we got into longboarding, we got into biking, got into fitness again and all of a sudden wait right back off and over on the same side again, we'll post a picture of that. So, what was interesting and at that point in my life was I put everything on being in shape. I put everything on looking good. And to me, I thought if I had that, then obviously happiness would come through. So my fellow nerds, nerdettes, or whatever you would like to call yourself listening to this nerdy podcast, I will say this. If you enter in that quest that extreme, extreme weight loss quest with the end result being happiness, guaranteed to fail. You are guaranteed to fail. Now, before you say that makes no sense, Archer, let me elaborate some. You have to love your yourself, love, you know, mentally love yourself, physically love yourself. Um, and if you decide that the only way that can happen is by some sort of physical appearance that other people see you as, you're never going to hit that target. Because the second you start making your way towards whatever that target was, you'll get there and you still, one, you may not even see it. Two, you'll feel like a failure if you don't hit it. Or you feel like a failure if you hit it and you can't maintain it. So there needs to be a self-love that happens. For you to really achieve happiness. Sounds super cheesy. I'm telling you it's true. I'm somebody who's done it two times now. So you fast forward to the present day. And I'm kind of in between. Right? So I want to jump back down on the scale. Currently hovering at a nice slim 285-ish. Somewhere in that ballpark. Not looking anything like those two pictures I previously showed. And I figured, let's try some little things, right? So instead of working out five hours a day, or 
three hours a day. I'm just going to cut some stuff out and just respect my body, respect myself. And to all of you listeners and all of you watching, that will be my challenge to you this year. Do something that actually causes you to feel like, you know what? I respect myself, respect the body I was given. I think that'd be actually pretty cool. And comment down below. Send me messages through social media, of course, say Archer across all the platforms. And let me know what you're deciding to do to make that change this year to merely respect yourself. And hey, if you're already there, points to you, kudos to you. So another cool thing I did uh, last week is I brought back, I don't want to say brought back permanently, but I did another YouTube 101 video or a building your own channel type video. And it was merely an update on how much I've spent even doing this, this hobby, if you would. And the reason I did that was a lot of people have messaged me, reached out to me. Um, I've even just seen it on social media where people are talking about wanting to start podcasting. Maybe you're listening to this right now saying you want to start podcasting, um, saying that you want to do YouTube videos, social media videos, whatever. So I did a video this week updating a, almost a year later how much I've spent doing this hobby, which is funny um, because I'm actually, again, to the challenge I did last week, I want to talk multiple topics and somehow link them all together. So by actually cutting down on drinking, cutting down on Taco Bell, I still eat out here and there, but I try to be a little healthier with it. By cutting down on a lot of that stuff, there was a lot of income that was not flying out of my wallet. And I decided I would invest in myself as well. So I started upgrading cameras, up, not cameras, sorry. I started updating the lighting, updating the microphones, that kind of stuff. So in the video this week, I noted that currently a year in, I've dropped over $800 on doing this. Now, to those of you listening who want to start doing your own podcast, doing your own show, you're probably saying this dude's freaking crazy. And you might be right. However, that's where you have to determine. Every week you have X amount of dollars. Every day you have X amount of dollars. How do you want to spend it? That $800 that I've spent over the course of, I think, eight months now, since I've kind of got back hardcore into doing this, that $800 I would have burned easily going out twice a week to go partying, go to the bar, God forbid, end up in a club somehow. Hell, I sp I'd spend, you know, even going out on dates, like just going out on like random dates all the time. That's easily $100 here and there. So by just saying, hey, I'm going to scale back and spend more time on myself, more time doing a hobby I like, invest in myself. In the grand scheme of things, I've actually saved money by putting that $800 into giving you content. And that's something that I want you, again, to consider as this year, your goal, if you remember, is to respect your body, respect yourself, is what can you do to invest in yourself? What can you do to keep you mentally stimulated? And that's one of the things that I always tell people when they ask or say, I want to start a podcast or some sort of video series. I tell you to do it because it's actually very mentally stimulating. You're always trying to figure out ways to come up with new ideas, find new ways to produce the content, release the content, uh, shoot it. Uh, right now, if you're watching this video on YouTube, not only have I changed my setup from last, uh, the last video, I've changed the lighting since the last video. So there's all sorts of little things that you try to do to kind of reinvent yourself and kind of change the way that you're doing things. So to those of you that actually want to jump into that podcast world, jump into the video, YouTube world, IG world, whatever, um, it will cost you over time. No doubt about it. Now, if you decide you want to not spend money until you start making money on it, by all means, have at it. Have at it. There are plenty of YouTubers, plenty of podcasters who've gone pretty far on very, very minimal equipment. Very little equipment. Um, I will always reference, and now I'm forgetting his name. <laughs> there was the... um. There was a crazy vegan guy a couple years ago that used to hang out with Freely the Banana Girl. And if you are if you know who I'm talking about, write it in the comments down below. I can't think of his name. And I don't want to look at the computer. Um, he got 
hella famous really fast shooting videos. Now, granted, they were all negative videos. It was him bashing people who are not vegan because a couple years ago, the vegan movement was huge. But he was just accuracy by napalm, as my friend, again, who I referenced earlier would say, accuracy by napalm. The dude was putting out four, five, six videos a day, a day on his YouTube channel, shooting it just on his phone. And any podcaster, any YouTuber you look up that has a video on how to start doing this, how to make this a hobby, they will always tell you, you have a resource in your hands right now to start doing this. So go for it. If you want to do it, go for it. Use your phone. Use your iPad. If you have an old camera lying around, hell, pick that up and use it. Little by little, you'll start to just add things. And don't try to add it all right away. Just little by little, just start building on it. And just start doing you. Start putting out content. And as I did, as I said in that video, and I'm going to link that video up above somewhere. As I said in that video, number one thing you should be concerned with is consistency with the content. So as long as you start being consistent, even if it's just one video a week, once it starts becoming routine, then you know, all right, maybe I'll start upgrading this, or upgrading that, change this, change that. And of course, the greatest resource of all, use YouTube. Just use YouTube to do it. And, you know, make this the year that you're like, hey, you know, what? I'm going to do something for me. I'll pick up a hobby. I'll do something new. And don't be ashamed to spend money on it because you're just spending money on yourself. Spending money on yourself to feel good, look good, mentally be stimulated, all of that good stuff. The other fun thing that is coming up, and I've not talked about this in a long time, is a big UFC fight. Now, all of you MMA heads, um, you're welcome. I, I'm going to talk MMA for a little bit. Those of you not interested in MMA, um, I don't know, hang out. Maybe you'll actually learn something here because you're probably going to see on ESPN or in the news in the next couple of days all the marketing starting up for this fight coming up. I believe it's this weekend. Heck, I'm just going to use the computer now. I was trying to skip using the computer, and I am failing at that. But the upcoming UFC fight is going to be Conor McGregor versus Donald Cowboy Cerrone. And this is actually the return of Conor McGregor after about a two-year... No, he fought last year. Um, so after a just about a year hiatus, he'll be making his return. Conor versus Cowboy will be UFC 246. And that will be on January 18th. So that's actually not this weekend coming up, but it will be the following weekend coming up. And I would love to actually do some sort of like in-depth talk on this fight with one of you. Um, of course, I'll chat with some people offline to do this, but if you're interested, comment down below, send me a message online, whether it's a call-in type thing or even maybe in person if you live in the Massachusetts, Boston area. That'd be cool. I am down for that. But the thing I wanted to kind of talk about here is old school UFC. But I'm not talking the generic UFC 1 old school conversation. I'm actually talking about that UFC um, introduction into pop culture via The Ultimate Fighter. Uh-huh. See, I told you I'd go back to every single topic here and link it together. Um, the Ultimate Fighter. Season one, game changer. And of course, the game changing aspect of it was the fight, the finale aired on Spike TV. It was that moment where all of a sudden the viewership on the show was very low. Round one of Bonner versus Griffin ended and everybody was texting everybody and on social media telling people to watch this show. Turn it on Spike right now. These two, two dudes are beating the ever living shit out of each other. Pardon my French. But it was true, and it is true. And it goes down as one of the greatest fights in history because it changed the game. That, to me, began the golden era of MMA. That was when, as a fan watching it, as a new fan watching it, it was something special. And it was something that, it wasn't on mainstream TV. 
it wasn't on NBC. It wasn't like the head of or on the front pages of New York Times. It was kind of like this underground thing. And they actually ended up becoming the underground um, MMA sites, I think called the underground, where fans would always exchange, you know, predictions, rumors, uh, behind the scenes stuff. It would always exist there. But it was, that was it. It was like this underground thing. It was this fun thing. And there was this guy who became larger than life. This dude had a thought and he said, hey, friends who happen to be rich, there's this UFC cage fighting thing going out of business. I say we buy it and redo it. And they said, screw it, we'll take you. I mean, you're a somewhat okay boxing promoter or boxing manager. We'll give it a shot. And at the very end, in the last ditch effort to make some money, they came out with the ultimate fighter and they took a bath on that one for sure. But when it was done, whole new thing. The UFC was new life was put into it. Fans were generated out of nowhere because to me, I I think the biggest thing was you were watching a bunch of people. It was, um, I think that was lightweight and heavyweight season one. I can't or light heavyweight, light heavyweight and Walter light heavyweight and lightweight. I think was it. I can't remember specifically. One of you is probably yelling at the phone or at your TV right now. Um, but you had all these these guys who they were all like outcasts and they were all normal dudes, normal jobs, um, janitors, cops, uh, uh, trainers, bartenders um, who had this passion for combat and they had this passion for just being locked in a cage with somebody else and putting it all out there, putting it all on the line. And when it was all said and done, they did it with almost no aspirations of making any money because at the time there was no money in it. And there was just such a rawness to it. And then all of a sudden you had this dude coming out, Dana White, who's, you know, the you're, the only thing you can relate him to is the Vince McMahon. You're like, this Vince McMahon dude keeps coming out and he's talking about, hey, do you want to be a fucking fighter and yelling at guys and cursing? But he's the president of the organization something you would never see in a real sport. You wouldn't see at the time Daniel Stern, who I think just passed away. So RIP that guy, if that's true. Um, But you wouldn't see anybody like that come out and just start cursing on TV at his athletes, right? Never. And you're watching it, but and you're like, but I see myself. Like I'm watching Dana and I see what I wish I could do. And I'm watching these fighters. I'm seeing what I wish I could do. And I think that's what got us all into it. And I think that's what made it so special and unique. And you had journalists like Ariel Hawani sitting at home watching it. Luke Thomas sitting home watching it. Eugene S. Robinson watching it. And where everybody's looking at it and just the game changed. The game changed on this one season. And through whatever circumstance I'm watching YouTube and a suggested interview was actually Dana White, Ariel Hawani from I think think six years ago and that was back when he was leaving fan house to do MMA fighting kind of in that period and I was reminded of everything I just said I was watching him talk I was watching because him and Ariel always had this weird relationship Um, I was watching it and I was like that's the Dana I miss that's the Dana I like that's the UFC I like that's the UFC I miss when I look at the when I look at the website right now and I'm looking at this UFC 246 and I'm watching these two guys, there's remnants of that old school, but it's not there anymore. Now it feels like it's, it's like when your favorite band goes mainstream, it's that kind of vibe. And then, um, after that video, the, the suggested one was actually Dana White and Brett Okamoto doing an interview for ESPN. And in my head, watching that interview, this is like the fourth time he's done, done that. I imagine Dana was sitting, he's sitting in his office, right? Sitting on his throne of money, because that's what he sits on now, in my head at least. That's what I would sit on if I was him. And he uh, looks down and he's like, you know, I got to do one of these press conference things I used to do. I think I used to do those, right? And he looks at his assistant and he's like, hey, didn't I, didn't I used to do this thing where I would talk to the press and they would like write it down and, and stuff like that. And they're like, yeah, I used to do um, those scrum things. And he's like, oh yeah. 
I used to do scrums. He's like, can I, can I do one of those again? And the secretary or the assistant or whoever it is is like, you know, we better run that up to the top first. Because we don't, you know, the Fertitas aren't here anymore. So now we've got to call the, the real bosses and see what they say. Calls them up. Hey, you guys think I can uh, do one of those scrum things uh, on there? Sure, Dana. You can definitely do that. Um, just make sure you say that we're doing a great job and that this is the greatest thing ever. Sounds good. I'll take care of it. Hangs up the phone, tells his assistant, all right, we're doing it. Set up the, set up the date. Set up the, where we're going to do this interview. Let me call the best man on the job to do this. The best journalist in the game right now. Picks up the phone. Walks down the hallway. Hey. Hey, Brett, is that you? Yeah, Dana, what's going on? Oh, nothing much. Hey, um, I was just kind of... Uh, it, it's so funny. I happened to be here at HR, and I was just looking over your paycheck. And I was wondering if you wanted to do an interview with me later on today. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be like one of those scrum things, but it's one-on-one. -on -one. Man, this paycheck's pretty decent. I bet you love getting that every week. Sure thing, Dana. I'll be right down. By the way, do you have those questions you want me to read to you? I'm so, it's so, it's ironic that you said that. I just finished writing that out. I'll give it to you when I get here. And that's what I imagine happened when I watched that interview. When I sat there and watched, when I sat there, in, actually, I was driving, listening to it. It was just playing in the background. And as I'm driving and I'm listening to this Brett Okamoto, Dana White conversation, by you're being interviewed by somebody who works for you, one. And two, you're, it's, you, it's edited. It's heavily edited. The questions are staged. It's, it just doesn't feel real anymore. It doesn't feel raw anymore. It's now a business, which is weird to say. That's, that's, there's no other way for me to kind of phrase it. And it's pretty sad. To me, when I watch the UFC put on their own interview with the president, their own sit, their own sit down with the president, with their own staff doing the interview, and they're saying like, man, Fight Pass is killing it. The, the viewership on ESPN is killing it. And you're just lying to our faces. Oh, it leaves a bad taste in my mouth. It really does. And seeing this game, this upcoming fight with McGregor and Cowboy, I really want to be excited about it. I really do. But it doesn't feel real to me anymore. And I don't know if it feels real to you anymore. So you want to be a fighter. I don't think any of these any I don't think anybody on this roster does anymore. I think they just want the paycheck now. And that's the major difference. I think now when I scroll down through this list of upcoming fights. It's not about the game anymore. It's not about the wins anymore. It's about the paycheck now. And that's the, that was the secret sauce about Ultimate Fighter Season 1. And that was the secret sauce about the UFC years ago. Is people were doing it because they just wanted to be the baddest motherfucker on the planet. And not because of the check coming with it. And for those of you who say to yourselves, I think I want to do this podcast thing. I think I want to do this YouTube thing. You got to do it because you want to be the baddest motherfucker on the planet doing what it is that you're going to be doing. In your job, every day when you go to that job and you punch in for the day, yeah, you get a paycheck. That's why you're there. But if you don't do your job and you are doing it because you want to be the best at what you can be, you're just wasting your time and you're just wasting your life as extreme as it sounds. And if you're doing this podcast thing and you're doing it with the sole intention of a check coming in and not because you want to be the best, you're going to fail. You're going to crash. You're going to burn. And you're going to look over at your cameras and your microphones and the things you spent thousands of dollars on. And you've made like five videos because you didn't have the right intention in mind. And you got to go all in on it and do it because you love it. And if it's not this, it's something else. Find Just find something that you love. And do it because you want to be the best at it or do it because you just it fulfills you. Don't do it for some sort of gain. Because otherwise you're not gonna it's not gonna go anywhere. You're not gonna get anywhere with it. Ooh, dark and broody, I feel like. It's got really dark. The lighting in the room is dark now for, for those of you listening only. So make sure you go on YouTube and watch this so you can see. Another thing I like about the new setup 
is having the TV behind me and having this picture of Archer. Because I feel like Archer on the beach, Miami Vice style. It's going to be the number one you show. I know it. But today, as you listen to this show, ask yourself, what am I going to do this year to make myself better? What am I going to do this year to respect myself? What am I going to do this year that's different than last year? That's not just something stupid like, I'm going to lose five pounds. How are you going to make yourself a better human being? Heavy question for Hey Archer 179. And I want to thank you for listening. And I want to thank you for watching. And as I mentioned, I want you guys to leave comments on this YouTube video. If you're listening to it, head over to my uh, social media, Hey Archer on Instagram, Twitter, um, Facebook. And I want you guys to put down what you're going to be doing to make yourself better this year and how you're going to respect yourself this year versus last year. Again, if you respect yourself last year, just do it again because it pays in dividends. I don't know a lot about financing, but I heard paying in dividends is a good thing. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. New videos coming this week, so make sure you head over to the YouTube channel. Just started reviewing Working Moms again. I just finished episode three. Just finished episode two of The Witcher. That video review series is now on the channel. And the best part is they're only two minutes. Two minute reviews of everything. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace.